I've got Joe DeGeneva on the line. When it comes to Obamagate, no one has followed it more closely than Joe. Thanks for being with us, Joe. My pleasure. So, Joe, I want to start because whether it's the unmasking of General Flynn, the FBI notes that came out, this is a Watergate level scandal. And Kaylee McEnany, the press secretary, keeps saying to these reporters, there's a stunning lack of journalistic curiosity. I know you understand that that lack of curiosity because you've been talking about this for so long and you've been getting scoffed at and laughed at. Did you think that they would play this dumb when the actual story broke and all the news came to light? Yes, I did. And uh, and the reason I did is I know them. I know most of the senior members of the press corps, radio, television, print. And for the most part, there are very, very few of them that are honest and distinguished and care about objectivity. Most of them are Trump haters, and they are delighted to tell a false story in order to hurt him. It's a very tragic thing to say that because American journalism is the bulwark of our democracy, and now it has become the BS of our democracy. And it's a shame. They have abandoned the First Amendment. They are not protectors of it. And regrettably, I have to say they're not even, I don't think they're entitled to its protection. But what right now, uh, they have abandoned the First Amendment, and they've abandoned the American people in a partisan uh, pursuit of the destruction of a president that they didn't like and they didn't vote for. Now, Joe, there seems to be a lot of people who are big fans of acting DNI Rick Rennell. He has been described by the president as a superstar, and he's recently announced that he's going to step down as the ambassador to Germany. His successor will be, for the DNI role, will be John Ratcliffe. Do you see Rick Rennell staying in the Trump administration in some capacity, or do you think he's just done with the swamp? Well, I, you know, it would be wonderful if they could find the right spot for him, which would be Secretary of State. That's what Rick should be. He should replace Mike Pompeo. Uh, I think Pompeo does not want to hang around that much longer. But I don't think Rick wants to hang around in government uh, just to see if Mike Pompeo is going to lease it. I think Rick wants to leave government for a while and then come back. But he would be the perfect choice for Secretary of State uh, in a second term. I don't know if Pompeo is going to stay till the end of um, President Trump's first term, but we shall see. Let's talk a little bit about Judge Emmett Sullivan. There's so many stories coming out right now. For people who don't know, General Flynn's case, you know what, Joe, you explained to people the DOJ wanted to drop General Flynn's case. They wanted to dismiss the charges. Now, Judge Sullivan is saying that he does not want to do that. As of, I think, today, he hired some hotshot lawyer to defend him. I don't know who's paying for that. But what is the deal with this judge, and is there a chance that he gets his way here? Uh, to answer your last question first, no, he's going to lose big time. The judge is going to be overturned. He's going to be forced to dismiss this case because the law from both the Supreme Court and the D.C. Circuit, where Judge Sullivan sits, is that he has literally no discretion whatsoever. He is a ministerial actor when the government files a motion to dismiss, particularly in a situation like this, where the government says it is dismissing the case because it was a corrupt case, which had no basis in fact and law, and therefore it cannot, in good conscience, under the Constitution, continue to pursue it. If he does not dismiss the case, which he will be ordered to do by the Court of Appeals, he will be removed from the case, and another judge will be given instructions to enter an order of dismissal. By the way, the question you asked, who is playing, who is paying Beth Wilkinson, yes. the woman that he has hired to represent him, is a very big question. Uh, I don't know that he has a right to hire anybody with government funds, uh, but there's, of course, the press is completely incurious about that question. No one would dare ask Judge Sullivan or his chambers, who's paying for this broad? Who's paying for her? And nobody will ask him that question. And the other thing I've noticed, Joe, and, and keep in mind, so when I hear about stuff with Spygate, it takes me, I'm, I would consider myself the average person consuming this story. It takes me a little while to figure it out. I don't always follow it perfectly. But I'm noticing that what the press is running with is that unmasking is not a big deal. They think it's, <laughs> it's totally normal. Can you explain to people, in case they get, 
you know, they're at a the cookout and someone says, oh, they unmask people all the time. It's no big deal. Explain why this was so egregious in this case of Michael Flynn. Well, because in the beginning, the press was reporting with the with the assistance of Susan Rice that unmasking just didn't happen. It was a rare event. It's a very serious matter to unmask the identity of a U.S. person, usually a U.S. citizen. And then all of a sudden, when it was discovered that the president of the United States, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden and other people from the FBI and the DOJ knew about unmaskings of General Flynn, 39 requests uh, over a very limited period of time, all of a sudden, the comment from the Dems and the press was, oh, this is quite normal. It happens all the time, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, it doesn't happen all the time. It's an unusual event. There are very strict rules inside the National Security Agency and the FISA court for doing it. And the fact that it was done quite cavalierly and regularly, especially by Samantha Power, is a scandal. And John Durham, the special prosecutor working for Bill Barr, is looking into precisely that issue, along with a number of other things, like who is the person who leaked the flynn Kislyak transcript to the Washington Post? By the way, nobody has ever seen a story with the content of that transcript in it. No one has ever seen that transcript. No one's ever heard it other than the people in the government. No one has ever printed a story about what was the precise content of the flynn Kislyak call. And yet, and, and by the way, General Flynn has never seen the transcript. He's never seen the original 302. Now, ask yourself about his original lawyers. How could they possibly allow him to plead guilty without seeing those two key documents? You talk about slugs, Covington and Burling, this very expensive law firm that charged him $6 million to plead guilty. What a bunch of unethical bastards. No, you're, you're totally right. But it's, it's funny hearing... Because if you're watching this as an outside observer, someone who doesn't know as much about the law and the situation in D.C., you watch the press and they're asking Keely McEnany, who's doing a phenomenal job, they're asking her, well, what was criminal about it? You, you, Trump keeps saying there was a crime here. What was the crime? And the crime that, that she keeps going back to is the leaking of the unmasking to the Washington Post. And I think it was Dan Bongino today who said, whoever did that, should get jail time. Do, do you think that that will ever come to light? Oh, I think it's going to be one of the one of the indictments that co that comes out of the Durham thing because that's a ten year felony, and it was purposely leaked as part of a scheme to undo Flynn. Remember, that was probably leaked by a combination of people in the Department of Defense, the FBI, and the Department of Justice. And what you have from that that act, besides the leaking. The leaking was part of a conspiracy to undo General Flynn and to undo the president of the United States, to defraud the United States government. That leak was a very important overt act in the conspiracy. And so the press can tut tut this all they want. It doesn't matter. This is, these horses are out of the gate. I mean, they're coming down the, the, the fairway. And, you know, we're at the 16th pole. And this is going to collapse. And the press... Which, which doesn't care, by the way. The press hates the president so much. They do not care that they look like fools and people who've abandoned their journalistic integrity. But when it's over, and it will be over when the indictments come down, whether anybody gets convicted or not doesn't matter. What matters is the people are going to know finally that Barack Obama and Joe Biden and Susan Rice and James Comey and Loretta Lynch and Sally Yates presided over the greatest violation of constitutional rights in the history of the country, and they did it with a smile on their face and with the consent of the American press. And it's amazing because this is the scandal-free Obama administration. How often do we hear that <laughs> shoved down our throats? Scandal-free, scandal-free. And this is, I would argue, one of the biggest scandals, at least in my lifetime, that I've ever seen come out. And you've, Joe, you've been saying this since day one, and you get a lot of heat even from our listeners who say Joe comes on every week and says the other shoe's going to drop and nothing happens. Now it seems like things are moving, and you kind of always knew that was going to be the case. Yeah, of course. I mean, listen, I, you don't have to be a brainiac to figure out. Once James Comey exonerated Hillary Clinton on July 5th, 2016, and I labeled him 
America's dirty cop. I'm delighted that the president has <laughs> taken that phrase over from me. Once James Comey did that, it was very clear what was going on. There was a plot to exonerate Hillary Clinton, get her elected, and if she didn't get elected, to, to frame Donald Trump. And in order to frame Trump, you had to frame Flynn. But here, here's the thing. The people who call these conspiracy theories, they, they continue to do so in the face of irrefutable evidence that there was, in fact, a criminal conspiracy against candidate, candidate-elect, and President Trump. There just isn't any question about that anymore. That's why Judge Sullivan is going to get slapped down so badly, he's going to have to have an armored car to get into the courthouse. I look forward to that. I mean, I just want General Flynn to have a little bit of justice here. It seems like this guy cannot win. He's lost his whole life savings. I don't know where he goes to get his reputation back. It just seems so unfair. But, Joe, before I let you go, I wanted to get your take on this. I saw this in Breitbart today. It says Twitter appears to have removed its blue verified check mark from a number of users on the platform over the past few days, a purge that included Rudy Takala, a journalist from Mediaite, who reported on former President Obama's abuse of government surveillance powers. So he says, this guy August says he tweeted his column about the Obama administration spying on journalists at 547 on Thursday. About an hour later, his verification badge magically disappeared. Does this stuff scare you that maybe they're, they're trying to control this narrative so much that they're just not going to even let people know about what's going on with the Obama administration? Well, there's no, well, there, there's no doubt about that. And Twitter, by the way, is, this is an antitrust case. Twitter, Facebook, all of these people that block content from conservative people, conservative websites. The blocking of content is wrong, and they know it, and they're doing it, and they think they can get away with it long enough to get through the next election and defeat Trump. The, the Department of Justice should be seeking injunctions against them. They should be filing antitrust lawsuits against them. And they should be filing criminal antitrust actions against these companies. The deprivation of constitutional right to speech. I know they're a private company, but you know what? There comes a point where a private company, see, see mobile oil, when a private company becomes so big and so pervasive, that it becomes a public utility, in fact. And that's where Twitter and these people are. They are suppressing free speech. They are more than a private company. And if they want to stay private, then the Justice Department should be coming down on them with the hammer of antitrust. And I'll tell you something. If they are, in fact, and you can find out through discovery, if they're conspiring to, to, to deny people speech, if that's what their algorithms do and the screwballs who run it, those that should become a criminal act. That's a violation of civil rights. Joe, my last question for you, and I thank you so much for being with us on this Memorial Day, is when can we expect to see some indictments come down? I, I know that Bill Barr said that Obama and um, Biden will probably steer clear of it, but I feel the same way you do, that we're going to see some, we might not know, they might not be huge names, but we're going to see indictments. When do you expect that to happen? June. June, okay. Well, thank you so much, Joe. We really appreciate it, and we'll talk to you next week. Don't turn that dial. It's Grace Curley filling in for Howie.